Yeah, that's me. You might be wondering how we ended up here. Well, stay tuned. We'll find out. Welcome back, friends. As you can see, the model is looking very good. Look at that backpack. You might even say, it looks marvelous. There are plenty of supports everywhere they're needed. No failures anywhere to be found. The reason for that is because we learned never to have a flat surface, a large flat surface parallel to the build plate. We don't want anything that's a large flat surface parallel to the build plate. So we've angled this 30 to 45 degrees. As you saw in previous videos in this series, I placed so many supports on the first layer of this model. That's the most important layer. It's hard to see them through all these supports, but the first layer is very well supported because if that is supported, it will stick to the rest of the model and not the FEP. If you missed that video, click the sliver of a link on the upper right hand corner of the screen here. Unfortunately, I didn't record removing this from the build plate the first time around, uh, but it came off pretty easily with the regular plastic scraper that came with the printer. So from here, we'll get into removing all of the supports and you'll get to see exactly how that's all done. And if it's not completely dry after you put it through your wash and cure station, or if you just wash it with isopropyl alcohol and maybe a really soft bristle toothbrush, uh, just make sure to wash off all the excess resin. But a uh, hairdryer can come in handy to get it completely dry. As you can see, it's very, very dry at this point. And now we'll get into actually removing the supports and I'm going to speed through some of this. I'll uh, slow it down so you can hear some of the cracking and popping because that's the most satisfying part. But uh, I'll speed through a bunch of this. A little heavy on the ear supports. Uh, the back of the head ones. Those come right off. Well, mostly right off. You can see in here the little star-shaped things I do, which aren't always necessary. It's a little overboard sometimes. Anyway. Now look at that on his arm. Those single ones, those are going to come off. Oh yeah, they're, <laughs> they're already coming off. They just fall right off. So yeah, this whole doing the, the fan supports thing, not always necessary. And sometimes just... Uh, Look how thin these ones came out. Like these are these are the fine supports, the light, and they you know they give it a little bit more and a little added support, but man, they just peel right away. Which is very nice. And see I fanned out some of these. It's not necessary, especially with the medium, like fan some light supports, but the mediums it's not really necessary most of the time. Anywho, let's see. Alright, a little bit of this. Hopefully you're not too blurry there. These are mostly coming right off. The rest we can clean up. Oh, look at how nice. Alright, I'm going to start breaking through some of these. And these, remember, are all heavy as far as I recall, so... Yeah. A bit of a pain in the butt, but I mean, that'll be easy to sand. Especially if you have like a belt sander. Just... Rawr, fire it up. Just fire it up! Fire it up! <laughs> I know we've got some crow fans in here. Okay. Yeah, so satisfying. Also, look at how well those all pulled away. Very nicely. Pulled off? <laughs> I'm a pulled off. The ground. And like my first layer, see, I got crazy with the supports. I got heavy with the supports. And that is good. That first layer is intact, didn't go anywhere, and we finally, after all this time, have a successful print. And look how easy it was to remove all those supports, huh? They're not all removed. I have to go in with the small tools to remove some of those other ones, but the majority came right off. Look at this. And the little tiny ones that I went crazy with. These were heavier, and they came right off without marring everything all crazily. So we still need to cure, but prior to curing, we need to make sure all the supports are off and that things like this are cleaned up. A little sprue. It's probably technically not a sprue because it's not a model. Maybe a touch of sanding. And look at that. I mean, it is, that is nice. Very nice. Like, look at that. 
a couple of supports here that were probably totally unnecessary. But it didn't leave them all completely marred. We have the full and complete backpack. You can see where it says Hex 3D. Beautiful sculptor, modeler. <laughs> <laughs> how I came out saying that, how I, my editing made it sound like I was weird. Well, because I am. Um, but let's take these big sons of bitches off of here. You know what, hold on. Done, son. Now that is the vast majority. There's still a few in here. A few in here. Cause I could get those real quickly. Got my handy dandy tweezers to remove the last few supports, which really aren't that much. Sorry, I'm trying to. Uh, very nice. And then we have one over here somewhere. See it? Come on, focus. Of course, we do have some still on Yoda's hand. His claw. Okay. You see it, you see it. Get off of there already. Cry out loud. The details are phenomenal. Okay. That takes care of those. I do happen to have a small torch or a flashlight as the as us in the States would call it. Does it not have batteries? I feel like doesn't have batteries. Double A's, triple A's, what do you take? All right, let's pause, bye-bye. Okay, it was triple A's. So what we're gonna do with this, is you can identify where the resin is. And, more importantly, you can cure some of the insides. And what you want to do here, the goal is to get as much UV light inside the model as possible. So go ahead and hold the light up to each hole a good 30 seconds to a minute, minute and a half, um, just to make sure you get every area inside the model, all of the uncured resin that might be in there needs to be cured. So make sure you get the light in every angle and every corner inside the model. Otherwise, uh, having wet resin inside could lead to cracking or warping of the model from the inside out. Uh, many of you have probably seen in the forums and other places where people will post, oh, my print that I hollowed out just exploded one day. That's from uncured resin inside of it. So it's very important to get that as cured as much as possible. And this is the easiest, one of the easiest ways to do it. Also, be sure not to look directly into the UV light. It's very damaging to your eyes. Uh, it may not feel like much or look like much, uh, but it can severely damage your eyes. So... Uh, but the best recommendation is to wear UV eye protection uh, and definitely do not look into the, uh, the light directly. Scream. It's so loud. I don't know why it has to be so loud. You could probably turn that off somehow with some settings somewhere. But we're gonna cure this for a good while. Uh, set to go. And he'll keep rotating until it's done. Also, hold on. 
Moved it a little off center so it goes right over that light on the bottom. Kind of nice. Kind of nice. So once that's cured, we'll check back in and compare all the models. And we'll go over what we've learned. Thanks for joining me today. First up, we have the OG model that was printed flat to the print bed and didn't have enough supports on the bottom of the backpack and the backpack completely failed and pulled away. Then we have the second attempt where we put heavier supports and supported the backpack better, but the backpack was still printed flat and parallel to the print bed. I'm real disappointed that this failed. Ah. Then we finally wised up with the final model where we angled it about 30 to 45 degrees, tilted it, properly supported everything, and as you can see, it's well supported. The whole backpack turned out. We do have a little bit of sanding to do for some of these uh, edges there, like you can see. But the whole thing turned out. You can see how it compares to this one and the previous one. Uh, it looks just wonderful. There are a couple of pock marks from the supports, but we can easily get rid of those. But it looks pretty fantastic. Again, I want to thank you all for joining me and watching my first how-to video series. It was a little disjointed, and I have more practice now, and my future videos will benefit from that. I'll have plenty more tutorial videos. We'll do some sanding on this, and we'll plug up some of the holes. But this video series is complete. Finito completo. Please join me as I will be recording many more videos. I'll try to make them take less time between the videos. This series took a while to complete, but the future ones will be a little bit faster and less time in between. In the description below, you'll find links to the printer I used, the resin I used, and several other tools that I use on a daily basis for 3D printing, resin 3D printing. I tried to round up some of the best deals to save you some time, and anytime you buy anything from any of the links below, I get a small, very small amount of commission. But feel free to use them, since it doesn't cost you anything extra, and it helps support the channel. Like the video if you found it useful, or informative, or entertaining and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. I'll have a short one soon highlighting many of the useful tools I use that I have links to below, and a few short ones about cleaning your vat or stirring resin when it's sat for a while. I'll also have a full tutorial on how to install Stable Diffusion to generate images using artificial intelligence for free on your Windows 10 PC. So be sure and come back and check that out when I'm done editing it within the next two weeks or so sometime. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, have fun creating, and the Force will be with you always.